In this video, we'll discuss about reference points. Reference points are very useful in defining position. Let me give you an example. If I showed you this picture and asked you the question, where is the book? Now, where is talking about describing the position of the book, right? And I'm pretty sure your answer is going to be on top of the table, right? So if you pause for a moment and think about this, to describe the position of the book, you started using the table as a reference, right? You use the table as a reference. It's using the table's position that you're describing the book's position, isn't it? Pause for a moment and think about it. Okay, let's move on to our next example. Here's a bottle of water, right? And uh, what if I asked you, where is the water? Where tells you that this is a question about position, right? And your answer is going to be inside the bottle, right? Now, notice carefully, you're using the bottle as a reference to describe the position of the water, right? The bottle was a reference here in the previous example. The table was a reference. These were simple everyday examples. Let's move into a little more complicated stuff. Here's the map of India, right? And if we zoom into the southern part, Bengaluru is somewhere there. Okay, now let's say I call two of my friends and ask them this question. Hey, where is Bengaluru? Again, since it's a where question, this is a question about position, right? I call Ashish and ask him, where's Bengaluru? Ashish says, hey, Bengaluru is west, 300 kilometers west. I'm like, okay, great. I call Selvi and ask her, hey, Selvi, where is Bengaluru? Selvi says it's 600 kilometers north. I'm like, wait a minute. Either Selvi's lying or Ashish is lying, or maybe both of them are lying. But if you actually think of it, it's possible that both of them are telling the truth, but only if they are at different places, right? Ashish is at Chennai and Selvi is at Kanyakumari. Right? So for Ashish, it is 100% reasonable to say that Bengaluru is 300 kilometers west. And for Selvi, it's 100% correct from her perspective to say that Bengaluru is 600 kilometers north. Right? So both are correct, isn't it? Now, 300 kilometers west makes sense if we use Chennai as the reference or if we are speaking from the perspective of Chennai. Right? And if we say 600 kilometers north, well, that's perfectly correct if we are using Kanyakumari as our reference. Right? If you're a little confused, I'd encourage you to pause for a moment here and think about this scenario. Okay, now let's uh, remove this Chennai stuff away, clear the clutter, and let's talk about Selvi's perspective. Now, Selvi wants to, let's say, verify this claim of uh, you know Bengaluru being 600 kilometers north what's she gonna do she is gonna let's say start measuring the distance between Kanyakumari and Bengaluru and she's gonna travel let's say from Kanyakumari to Bengaluru so she starts measuring the distance at home at Kanyakumari and it's zero kilometers there and as she moves she's measuring the distance that she has traveled right and she reaches Bengaluru and it's 600 kilometers Okay, now I want you to notice something here. She started measuring distances from home, right? That's when she started traveling, right? So if you look at this example, the reference here is at Kanyakumari. The reference is at zero kilometers. You're using Kanyakumari as your reference to describe the distance to Bangalore or to describe the position of Bangalore, right? Now, so when you travel 100 kilometers, you reach there. You started from home. When you travel 200 kilometers, you know, from home, you've traveled like that, right? Notice all these distances, they're all measured from the same reference point. All the distances are measured from the same reference point. And that in this case is Kanyakumari, right? Again, I'd encourage you to pause for a moment and think about what we just talked about. Now, let's get back to the old question, where is Bengaluru? So what if I just said 300 kilometers west or 600 kilometers north without telling you whose perspective I was speaking from, or what reference point I was using. These statements 300 kilometers west and 600 kilometers north would be meaningless, right? So to describe the position of Bengaluru, I need to tell you whose perspective or what reference point I'm talking from. Okay, let me give you uh, another example. Okay, this is an interesting one. I'm sure you've seen athletic events. I'm sure you've seen the 100 meter dash. It's one of the most prestigious events in the Olympics, right? The 100 meter dash. Now, the 100 meter dash has a start line and a finish line, right? Let's say a few of us are planning to run it. Let's say Vibhor is 
are running and me Joel is running and Usain Bolt is running as well right now uh, we all start from the start line and when we are about to start the race we've run zero meters right and then we're slowly gonna go through the entire race and uh, reach the 100 meter mark right whoever reaches the 100 meter mark first wins obviously right now uh, let me progress the story let's say the time is five seconds when the time is five seconds we've all run a little bit and Usain Bolt clearly is running very fast and if I want to now describe the positions of all of us right how would I describe it you would say okay Usain has run about let me eyeball that that's about 45 meters okay great so I write that down in front of his name and then I say okay let's see how much Joel has run that is about 20 meters great I write that down and then do the same thing for Vibor 30 meters great now if you notice what's happening here i'm measuring the distances that the runners are running and i'm measuring all the distances from one particular line right or from one particular point and that point becomes the reference point right so i'm measuring these distances from the reference point great what would happen at eight seconds everybody's run further ahead Okay, Hussein is almost at the finish line, right? Now, let me now check for positions at eight seconds. What do you think they would be? Hussein has run 90 meters, so that's his position. I've run uh, 50 meters, that's my position. Vibor has run 60 meters, that's his position, right? I want you to notice that as time passed, the positions vary. Right? They keep increasing because the distance that we've run from our reference point, from our start line, has increased. Right? But though the distances vary, though the positions vary, the reference point is fixed. Right? To summarize, reference points are useful for two things. A, describing position, and B, for measuring distances. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.